Hey, this is Doug with Design 8 Studio. And if you have built an enclosure for your laser, or if you're trying to plan building an enclosure for your laser, you may be interested in putting a camera in. And any USB webcam is compatible with Lightburn by default and it's really a great idea for you to consider regarding your enclosure. One of the questions that you're going to come up against is how much headroom is needed for the camera to see all of the cut bed in my laser enclosure. This is a good one. It's autofocus and 1080p and it has a really wide field of view, 96 degree field of view. It's also 20% coupon off, plus another 5% coupon off. Takes the price of this camera from 33 something down to, I think, 25 or 26 something. But if you're shopping it, you'll notice that there is a 90 degree field of view, a 70 degree field of view, the 70 degree uh, comes with autofocus for only $18.99. Um, and so the, there's a pretty big price jump between the 70 degree field of view and the 96 degree field of view. So what I want to show you is an easy trick to figure out how much headroom you need in your enclosure between this camera and the cut bed. So let's do this for the 96 degree field of view camera. You can do this with Inkscape free 2D vector illustration or Corel Draw. You can do it in SketchUp. Uh, you can do it in Fusion 360. In this case, I'm doing it in SketchUp. So the first thing is to create a line at the bottom that indicates the maximum width or maximum length, whichever is greater, of your enclosure, or in this case, actually, of the cut bed. And once that line is in place, then you put a guideline right in the middle, and then you make a copy of that guideline and rotate it to half of the 96 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and put some guidelines on the left side and right side. But there's my first guideline, which is at half of the 96 degrees. Then you put the other guideline rotated 96 degrees away from that. And then you move both of those guidelines up or down until the edges correspond exactly with the edge of your cut bed. You can see I just nudged it there. And then all you have to do is measure the distance from the cut bed up to where the camera lens would be indicated by the intersection of the two angled guidelines. So I just dropped a horizontal guideline on that intersecting point, and now I can draw a rectangle indicating how much headroom is needed on the inside of the enclosure on that side. Now if you build an enclosure with the ability to have motorized Z adjustment of the cut bed, then it's good to have autofocus, and you could certainly have this distance be the minimum for how high your camera needs to be above the cut bed. And then if the cut bed got further away, it would stay auto-focused on the cut bed, uh, but then you would see more than the cut bed. However, when the cut bed was at its closest to your camera, you would still be able to see all of it. And if you want to for fun, you can go ahead and draw in the approximate size of the camera and know that if you've measured the thickness of the camera as it's positioned looking down, you can add that thickness on. So I would need to find out how thick this camera is from front to back and add that on. But when I take my measurements on this and use the dimension tool, I realize that I've got my 736 millimeters uh, on the long side of my extended diode laser rig, and then I measured 331.348 millimeters of height to match that field of view, and so that winds up being about 13 inches, 
and that is allowing that camera to see all 29 inches from the front to the back of my cut area. I hope this has been helpful to you and I'll put a link in the description to that particular camera and until the next video this is Doug with Design 8 Studio and I wish you happy making.